seat. Are you glad to be in God's house? You can sit down if you'd like this morning. I tell you what, God is good. God is on the throne. And do you thank him this morning for his amazing grace? Do you thank you this morning for how many times he has forgiven you? Do you thank him this morning that he is a forgiving God? You know, I want to talk this morning about forgiveness. And I think we've all, many times in our life, have had to ask for forgiveness. And I think some of us is still asking a little bit too much for forgiveness. Now, who believes this this morning? I think when God brings us up, when God teaches us, when God gives us his word, he's telling us exactly how we should live. That's our roadmap. That is our dictionary. That is our encyclopedia to be a spiritual person. Now, God says that we have to forgive one another. I believe he forgives us. I'm sorry. Will you please forgive me? I'm sorry. Will you please forgive me? I don't know about you, but sometimes like a kid will do that over and over and over. It gets kind of boring after a while. It gets kind of on the nerve after a while. Now let me... Since I got some agreeance on that this morning, I wonder if God gets tired of hearing that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now, come on. Now, let's be real here this morning, okay? We're going to talk about forgiveness, and we're going to talk about how God is a forgiving God, and we're going to also touch the point this morning on how to be forgiven and truly mean it. Now, who believes this this morning? we got to truly believe that God is going to forgive us. I do. Do you? I truly believe that God's going to forgive me when I fail him, but I truly believe this also. God don't want you to keep going back and back and back and back to the same old thing because I believe he gets tired of hearing it. I do. I believe that. I believe with all of my heart that God says, now, you know what, guys? You know what, ladies and gentlemen? You know what, boys and girls? You know what it is to be a Christian. You know what it is to leave a spiritual life. You know you can't lie. You know you can't deceive. You know you can't steal. You know all these things. You know that you must love your neighbor. No matter if he did throw a rock at you. No matter if he did hang your cap by the tail on the clothesline. No matter what he done. I love my neighbor. But I can't forget what he done, God. No! You can't do that. You must forgive and you must forget and you must go on. I don't want to go to hell because some guy threw a rock at my car tire. I don't want to go to hell because somebody looked at me ugly. Has anybody ever looked at you ugly? Oh, I'm not the only one? Huh? Okay, Pastor, don't open up that bucket. You get a real bucket going this morning, right? Everybody don't like you. I done told you that this morning before church, right? So what makes you think that they're not going to look at you ugly? What makes you think they're not going to say something ugly to you? What makes you think they're not going to whoop on that horn? And blow you plumb out of your seat because you wasn't expecting that, right? Turn around and go, hi. I'm going to test you next time I pull up behind you and blare my horn. I'm going to see what you see. I, I, got, I got a few cars. You won't know what I'm in. We got a car lot. We'll just take them at random. We take them at random go, beep. I can see Sister Sandy right now. She'll try and see who's back here. Huh? <laughs> We love you, Sister Aminer. Please forgive. We've got to. Thank God he, he does. He forgives us over and over and over, doesn't he? But do you believe this? Now, serious, here's my point this morning. Do you believe we've been Christians long enough to, come on, guys, 
let's quit messing up so much. Let's quit, let's quit acting up. Let's quit doing things that we know. I'm going to share this with you because I can't help but do it. I don't like to apologize. I don't like to apologize. Now, come on, let's have some truth this morning, do you? You know what? I'm going to have to tell you, I think that helps me. I don't like to apologize. So I'm kind of okay with that because I'm like, I wash my mouth, huh? You get tired of being the person that says things that they shouldn't say all the time. So since I don't like to apologize, I try to say everything so nice. Because God is willing to forgive us no matter what. Each time that we mess up, God forgives us. But I don't want to be in that action of delinquency. Because God is liable to show up in my act of terrorism. God is liable to show up in that act of ugliness that I'm doing. Well... I think it'd be okay because everything was okay. No. No. I told you I don't sugarcoat nothing here. You can't live a 99% spiritual Christian life and expect to go to heaven. Who believes this today? You've got to be 100% Christian to go to heaven. Oh, Jesus, help me. They didn't hear that. Who believes that? All right. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Because you've got to be a Christian to make heaven your home. Amen. Now, please forgive. Oh, it's hard to do. But guys, let me tell you something. Think of the things we've done and God forgive us. Oh my goodness. We've probably even cursed God before. Oh yeah. We've probably slapped God in the face more than once in our life. And he keeps on forgiving. Jesus tells us in the Bible that we can have the forgiveness that he has. Jesus tells us to be that example of him. Jesus tells us in 1 Peter 2.21, we need to be walking in them footsteps. We need to be that example. I want us to be the example of God, not the example of the devil. Because guess what? There's plenty of them out there. There's plenty of devils out there. There's plenty of imps out there. There's plenty of helpers out there. But you want to know something? There's not enough of us. Well, God, what's going on in the schools? Answer yourself that one. You kicked him out. What do you want him to do? He is a gentleman. But, oh, my. We've kicked him out of so many places. Now, I'm going to tell you how the devil tries to override things. And I'm going to tell you just a little bitty something that happened yesterday morning. We was, went to that big auction we was telling you about. Well, the people that runs it is, I don't know how godly they are, but they have God in them. Let's put it that way, okay? But here's my point. Mike, the owner, always prays before he starts a big auction when the public, I told, I told them, I said, watch. Well, they got up there and they got busy raffling off some or benefits, benefit cakes for uh, abortion, which I thought was great. They sold some cakes for $600, didn't they? And then resold it and resold it. Anyway, they probably got $3,000 yesterday, but I thought it was great because it was for abortion. Do you know that abortion is from the pits of hell? Yes. Look at these back. Look at these babies back there. Come on now. Abortion is horrible. So anyway, when that was said and done, I think he was a little bit excited. And that took a little bit more time than he probably thought it was going to take. And he looked out to this multitude of stuff he's got to auction off. Man, he got right into prayer. I mean, uh, right into the auction. He forgot. Here comes Sister Sue. <laughs> right in front of these people. I said, oh, my gosh, he's going to bring, grab that microphone out of his hand. But I was proud of her. He said, oh, I'm sorry, Susan, I forgot. Oh, thank you, Susan, for reminding me. Thank you so much, Susan. But anyway, he prayed. But now, if she wouldn't have done that, and if I wouldn't have stepped forward, if she didn't have do that, guess what? wouldn't have happened he didn't do it on purpose 
It just happened, okay? But here's my point this morning, guys. He apologized for not praying, and he prayed. We got to continue being that Christian. Do we all forget sometimes to do certain things? Yes, we do. But God truly understands that. What about when we know to pray and we ignore it? What about when we know to read the Bible and we don't? What about when we know it's time to go to church and we don't go? Now, God is upset with that. God doesn't like that this morning. Amen? So let's talk about forgiveness. You got your Bibles with you this morning? I want you to go back to the very first book of Genesis. <laughs> I want you to go to Genesis 45. Only got five verses, guys. We'll be out here in a jiff. Genesis 45, 17 through 21. Are you there? I, I know, I hear some pages. I hear some pages. Genesis 45, we're going to start in 17 and we're going to end up in 21. By the way, saints of God, Genesis is the first book of the Bible. Nobody acts surprised about that. Yeah, wait till we get to Hosea. We'll really hear some pages flash on. <laughs> wait till we get to the book of Ruth. We'll hear all kinds of flash. Oh, yeah, some cheat. Some's got indexes, some. Some index. <laughs> Brother Bill, we keep forgetting to get your index, bud. You get, you, are you there, buddy? I'll give you an easy one this morning, Genesis. Are you there? Oh, good job, good job. I love babysitters, too. God's good, Amen. I love these babies in the church, amen? I sure miss my other ones back there in the back this morning. we got to check on them, don't we? The name of my subject, or the I guess you should say the title of my sermon this morning is going to be Please Forgive. Are you there now? Genesis 45, 17. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Say unto thy brethren, This do ye, laid your beast, and go get you unto the land of Canaan. And take your father and your households and come unto me, and I will give you the good of the land of Egypt, and ye shall eat the fat of the land. Now thou art commanded, this do ye, take your wagons out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives, and bring your father and come. Also regard not your stuff, for the good of all the land of Egypt is yours. And the children of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them, gave them wagons according to the commandment of Pharaoh and gave them provision for the way. Now, is that good enough? Are you ready to go home? Did you understand all that? I didn't think so. Okay, we're going to explain it. You want to this morning? You want to see what this really, really means this morning? Because some of you is looking at me like you're lost this morning. Okay? <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. <laughs> hey, one thing about it, Sister Barbara, I love honesty. <laughs> well, God is good, isn't he? Let's talk about this this morning. Now, we all know who Pharaoh was, right? We all know who Joseph was. Pharaoh said to Joseph, tell your brothers, let's start up and back at the beginning again. I'm going to break each verse down for you first. Let's start in 17. But first, let's pray for the message. Can we do that? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for this day that you have given us. Lord, I thank you for the honor and the privilege to be behind this pulpit this morning. I thank you so much, Sister Sue and I both do, for all the sheep that are in the place this morning. Lord, we ask that everything that comes out of my mouth would be of you to get the point out about you. Lord, I ask that every ear here could hear and understand the word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit being in this place. Help us in Jesus' name if we could all say amen. Now, see, guys, Pharaoh said to Joseph, tell your brothers to load up, pack their animals, and return quickly to their homes in Canaan. You get to 18, it says, tell them to bring your father and all of their families and come to Egypt to live. Tell them that Pharaoh will assign to you the very best territory in the land of Egypt. You will live off the fat of the land. 
Now, I got a point to bring out so far. When God tells us to get up and move, when God tells us to get up and go, he has a very good reason for that. He don't just do that because he's bored. He don't just do that because he wants something to do. Well, Lord knows he got plenty to do. Taking care of us, right? Taking care of us. But he says, go. When I tell you to go, when I tell you to move, it's going to be for the best of your your, your behalf. Now, sometimes we, er, we stall. Er, that sometimes you look up and go, was that really you, God? That sometimes you question God. As I tell you all the time, sometimes we think he's Monty Hall. Which door you want? One, two, or three? Come on now, let's make a deal. Deal, God is not a deal maker. Huh? Is he not? See, God is real, Amen. not a deal. God is the real thing that we need in our life. Without God, without God, we can't survive, guys. Does all of you know that this morning? Oh, but you've tried it without him, haven't you? Was it rough? Oh, it got tough? Didn't work, did it, Brother Bill? <laughs> That's all I need for an answer. That's good enough. How about it, Brother Albert? Huh. Huh. It's tough. I tell you what, all of you, no. When you try to live without God, it's not going to work. Oh, you might make it for a little while. You might kind of glide through. You know what? There's plenty of other people that do. But have you ever seen, have you ever looked at them real good? Now, come on. They're miserable. They're miserable. I don't want to be miserable. You can't be miserable if you're a saint. Come on, quit frowning at me now. You can't be miserable if you're a saint. You've got to be happy. You've got to have the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Ha. Isn't God good? See, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Brother Albert, you notice I bailed out on that and let them take over? I sing like a letter. I just let her out. But I like solo better. Solo, you don't hear me. Oh, dear Jesus. There is a great importance of listening to what God has for us. When God tells us to move, when God tells us to go here, when God tells us to go there, kind of like when God told me to go there this morning, I didn't want to. But we got to do what God tells us to do. And you see... He worked it all out. But now if I wouldn't have obeyed and did what God told me to do this morning, I'll just leave it with you like this. I don't want to know what consequences would be. And you know back in the Old Testament, guys, we're about as far back as you can get this morning. But back in the Old Testament, you mess up, God going to get you. Tell me he don't have mercy on us today. Tell me that he's not gracious. Because back then, man, he would open the earth. And I mean, he would just swallow them people. I'm talking, I'm talking a lot of people. I'm talking hundreds of people. He would just swallow. I had a guy tell me one time, God's rude. He said, God's rude. Of course, automatically, I knew he didn't know what he was talking about. So I'm like, oh, Lord, help me on this one. In fact, I hadn't been saved very long. <laughs> I know what she's going to say. You still haven't been, right? Oh, Lord. God's rude. I said, how do you figure that, sir? Boy, he got telling me about the bad things that God done, and he got telling me about things going on in his life, and I just listened to him rattle, listened to him rattle. Actually, he was babbling. You don't know anybody that babbles, do you? Do you know anybody that babbles? I'm talking about besides your spouse. Do you? Yeah, God's rude. I said, well, tell me why God's rude. He went on to tell me his life story. And I'm like, I'm, I'm really into this, really listening. Finally, he gets to the point. <laughs> this is funny. He said, you know when Moses built that boat?
I'm not done yet. What are you laughing at? I said right then, Lord God, he don't even know Noah's name. Now, you're going to have to help me here this morning. He said, you know, when, when, uh, when uh, 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 Moses built that big old boat, and he said all them people was scratching and trying to climb up the side, they was knocking. God's rude. He wouldn't even let them in that boat. I said, sir, there's something you're not understanding here. Well, I think I saved that for a little while because I didn't want to make him too mad at me. After all, I was trying to save his soul, not trying to burn him up even more. I said, sir, you have to understand. God had already been ministering to them people. God had already told Noah what was going on. God gave them ample, ample, ample opportunity. Did he not? And what happened? Hey, don't laugh at them, people. We've all done the same thing. Come on now. Don't laugh at them. I don't know if I convinced him or not. But I hope he's in a church called Noah's house today. <laughs> Amen? But see, most people don't understand what God has for them. And if you're not a Christian, I guess you probably could think God is rude. Because you look back at things like that. And you go back to where people tell you that he just swallowed up people and kids and all these kinds of things. Oh, you know what? I think many, many Christians today have a problem understanding things. Oh, losing loved ones. Infants with diseases. Ebola. Cancer. All these kinds of things. But you know where you're going to have to be with that? You're going to have to be here with this. Don't question God. God's got it all under control. You know what? If Ebola moves from Africa to Orange County, guess what? God's going to protect us. And guess what? If God comes to take us home with Ebola, Ebola, here we come. I mean, if you're ready, you're ready, right? But see, we, we, some days we're not spiritually fit. Yeah, most days we're not fit. We're like, no, no. I've heard people say that they're scared to death of Ebola. Now, come on, guys. Are you scared to death of it? No. I hope you're not. How come you're not scared of it? Do you, why? Take it to the Lord. What's Philippians 4.13 say? Even the fear of Ebola. Even the fear of cancer. Oh, how about the fear of death? Oh, some of us this morning have fear of death. I don't want you to have fear of death. Boy, if one of you guys died and I preach your funeral, we would have a party! Man, praise God they're out of here. Some people may walk out. That's okay. Who believes this? That's going to be a going away party. But now I want you to be where you need to be. Now, can you still forgive your neighbor? I'm not done yet. Let's go a little farther. Number 19. And I'm saving that word C-L-O-S-E till later, okay? 19. And tell your brothers to take the wagons from Egypt to carry their families on it and bring your father here. Don't worry about your belongings. Ooh, I got to stop right here for just a second. Well, maybe a minute or two. Don't worry about your belongings. Some of us is worried about our belongings. <laughs> yeah, we auctioned all ours off yesterday. <laughs> don't worry about your belongings. I don't know if there's anyone in here today. I pray that there's not. But I pray this morning that um, we don't get hung up on our belongings and our things that we have. As Sister Sue always says, you will never see a U-Haul trailer behind a hearse. Can't take it with you. Oh, what about the man they buried in a Cadillac? Yeah, they buried him in his Cadillac. Hmm. 
I don't understand that because uh, the Cadillac doesn't have a spirit, or does it? Now, if they'd have buried him in one of them Dodge Spirits, I'd have just thought he was loco, right? But they buried him in a Cadillac. Sorry about that, Brother Bob. I forgot you. <laughs> yeah, one of them Dodge Demons, okay. Oh, boy. But what I'm saying is, he was so hung up on his Cadillac, he was going to heaven. He was going to heaven with him. I don't believe that's going to happen. I don't think that's going to happen. I have a feeling the car is completely rushed out and his old dead bones are still laying there. Amen? But guys, we have to forget the belongings. What does this mean? Does this just mean this your car? Does this just mean your couch at home? Does this just mean your lazy boy? This means even your family. See, when Jesus called upon the disciples, he said, come on, come on. Well, 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 well. Uh, give me a day or two. I gotta go say everybody. I gotta go say bye to everybody. No, come on, come on. It's time to go. But we can't do that if we don't have a forgiving heart. Amen. I'm here. Oh, that's right. I think I told all of you Sunday I was gonna stay back here. I forgot. Next Sunday. Next Sunday. For the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. Now God is telling us this morning, if we're a saint. If we're a forgiving person, God says he's going to give us the best of everything. may not be exactly what you want. Does anybody here have a little bit of change in a bowl at home? Good, I need supper today. No, not really. If you have a little bit of change in a bowl at home, you are, you are blessed. You are more blessed abundantly than you could ever imagine am i right now god is on the throne god says that he has it under control god says that he will take care of your belongings god says he would handle your situations come on guys i'm telling you now you've got to be a forgiving person i know i'm going around a long ways about this but here comes the point we can't be a true saint if we don't forgive each other. Here's another main great point today. Quit doing the same thing over and over and over. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Come on, guys. God says, you know what, people? It's time to wake up. It's time to go out and save some souls. It's time to go out and witness. It's time to tell people. It's time to invite people to church. Oh, Look at that sister. I'm, she's smiling. I'm going to go over and invite her to church. Woo! Look at that one. She's not for, uh, uh -uh, I ain't going her. No! Didn't mean to look right at you, Sister Nidra. It's what you get for eating prunes before you come to church. Right? I'm glad to have Sister Nidra this morning. She's been kind of sick. Amen? Give her a hand. Amen. God's good. Okay, let's close with number 21. And the children of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them wagons according to the commandment of Pharaoh, and gave them provision for the way. Ooh-wee. You want me to break that down a little bit? So all the sons of Jacob did as they were told, and Pharaoh did what he said. Here's the point. God said he would make a provision. Now, sometimes I think in our spiritual walk, we run into walls. I think sometimes we run into stumbling blocks. I think sometimes we run into little detours, but God said he would make you a provision. Do you know what that is this morning? God says he would make a way when you think there's no way. God said he would turn the impossible into possible. God says by the call of Jesus, just the call of that name, he would hear you, and he would answer your prayers. He didn't say instantly he would answer your prayers. He said he would answer your prayers. We got to get off of that impatient thing. We got to say, God, your timing. Now, you know what? This is hard to pray. Now, Lord, you know what I need, but I'd like to have it now. That's the easy part. You want to hear the hard part? Now, Lord, you know I want that, but your perfect timing. Yeah, whenever. Yeah, Lord, whenever you want to give it to me, but I need that so bad. Oh, Lord, blue is my favorite color. Now, Lord, tomorrow's Monday, and I think that dealership is open, so I'd love to have that blue Cadillac. There's a difference between wants and needs. 
are you a strong enough Christian today to just go for the need part? Are you strong enough today to forget the want parts? Are you strong enough today? Ooh, this is good. You ready? There's somebody that you haven't forgiven correctly yet. <laughs> I want you to be able to forgive them today. I want you to be able to forget what they've done for you. Now, let me break this down in a couple of ways. Thank you, Jesus. Well, he or she claims to be a Christian. Why do they keep doing that? Well, here's my answer to that that the Lord told me to tell you. They may claim they're a Christian, but if they keep doing you like that, they're not a Christian. Now, go ahead and forgive them and be done with it. Now, say, for instance, well, they're not a Christian. You don't need anything else from that point. You know why? Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Listen to me. They're of the world. Have you ever been of the world? When you was of the world, was you ugly to anybody? Oh, but you're a saint now. You're a man. You're a woman. You're a child of God. Oh, listen to me, guys. You can't be ugly no longer. You can't be neglective to what God has for you. Amen? Are you getting my point this morning? I'll start over if you want me to. Now I can talk. Woo! <laughs> yeah, look, er, er, God's good, isn't he? <laughs> you know what Luke 23, 24 says? I don't either, so I got it written down. <laughs> Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Now, I tell you what, if he could say that hanging on that cross, wow, who are we? Who are you if you can't forgive somebody? Man, Brother Albert, are they getting my point today? I said they, I know you are. Well, Brother Bill, you still here? Love you, man. In fact, I'm going to look. Ooh, my wife left. That might be bad, huh? <laughs> if all of you still here and my wife is still here, never mind, I ain't saying no more. <laughs> hey, sister, bye. So many points here. Yes, you do. Go ahead. Pray for them. That's what we got to do. Now, I want you to listen to some points I got here this morning, and then we're going to close. Peace to you, baby. Forgiveness. Do you have that this morning? Do you have compassion? Hmm. Can you give apologies like you need to? I knew a guy one, t I knew a guy one time that would apologize like this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's how you'd apologize. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wasn't talking about you either, Sister Barbara. <laughs> she didn't catch that. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Hi, baby. How are you? <laughs> hey, we like it that way. Hey, we like it that way. You know why? Everybody turns around to see who's coming in. I can get a drink of water. <laughs> like, who is that leaving right now? Okay, Pastor, quit clowning around and get done. <coughs> Thank you, choir. Oh, that was me. Who believes this this morning? You've got to be humble like Jesus was. Not only to apologize, but can you accept apologies this morning? Ha! Ah, didn't get too many shakes out of that. Can you accept a good apology from somebody this morning? Amen. Okay, one last point here. Let's quit apologizing so much. Ooh, boy. I left that out in left field, didn't I? Well, I got to come out here and finish it, okay? Uh, quit apologizing so much. How do we do that? <laughs> quit messing up so much. Quit saying ugly things so much. Uh-huh. 
quit giving ugly looks to the old lady in front of you that's sitting there on a green light. Uh huh. Quit giving ugly looks to the old man in front of you buying 54 lottery tickets. I need some help on that one. How about you guys? Not only do we need to accept apologies, we have to be able to give them in return. And we got to do it Christ like. Okay? Now, if we be Christ-like and we be the example of Jesus, then guess what? All is going to work out, okay? Is everybody happy with that this morning? Did everybody get the whole point? Sister, I love you more. He's a liar. What you looking at me like that for? You was like. <laughs> say it again. You didn't know what I was going to say? Now, you know I'm not going to say nothing too far out of hand. Huh? <laughs> all right sister Charlie, you ready the devil's a liar Amen. she told me she went home and told brother tim that he goes where did you hear that she said pastor steve i don't know if that man still likes me today for saying that <laughs> but every time he goes by shop beep beep so i think he loves me amen, amen. brother hey that's true there at least he don't hate me amen <laughs> yeah all right you guys ready to shut it down it's only about 10 minutes to 12, isn't it? Oh, after, okay. Well, after. I'm always after. With all heads bowed and all eyes closed this morning, on a serious note here, I thank the Lord for you being here this morning. But guys, I know without a shadow of a doubt that sometimes we do have a problem with apologizing. I know sometimes we also have a problem with accepting apologies. Jesus hanging on that cross. I mean, beat to pieces was he beat and shredded to pieces and had enough humility had enough oxygen to say father forgive them for they do not know what they do i want to leave you with that this morning for the world see the world don't know what they're doing when they're not saved when they're not a christian they say and do things that they shouldn't do. And I, I told you all ago, guys, if a person claims to be a Christian, they keep on doing that, that's not much of a Christian if you ask me. So I want us to be the Christians. I want us to be the people that God says that we need to be. So as this altar is open this morning, it's open.